On behalf of Cardiovascular Research on Life, uh, I would like to uh, uh, thank uh, Professor Thomas Luscher uh, for joining us today uh, as part of the series uh, of Cardiovascular Research, Leaders in Cardiovascular uh, Medicine. Thank you, Tom, for accepting uh, the invitation. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Uh, Tom, uh, I think speaking to a person uh, of uh, your st statue in cardiovascular medicine, it's uh, very important to ask the question, what is important for uh, success? Is it ambition or is it talent? Well, you know, I always uh, say in my lecture about uh, how to become a leader in cardiology, I bring the example of uh, a, a pianist, uh, Martha Argerich, versus a piano player, pa piano teacher. And I uh, asked the question, what is the difference between the two? Of course, Marta Algerich may have more talent, but the major uh, difference that research actually showed is she, she trains more than eight hours a day. So it's this 10,000 hour rule that Malcolm Gladwell uh, popularized. So uh, I would say uh, if you're talented, that's good, but it's not good enough. Uh, and in the first 10 years of your career, there is no life, life work balance. I agree, uh, and uh, I think we, we all, uh, I'm not sure that after the first 10 years you, you regained <laughs> life work balance, but uh, I think indeed uh, hard work is, is, is inevitably needed for, uh, for development, and uh, I think it's very uh, true. Could you try to tell us uh, about your uh, uh, career and uh, career development? Uh, because you've achieved uh, as much as one may want to achieve in cardiovascular research throughout the years. How, uh, what was the most uh, important step in, uh, in your career uh, looking through your eyes? Well, I think the most important step was to uh, find a place when I went to the States to, to get uh, really proper research training. So I, I, I bought a ticket and uh, a round flight ticket and visited uh, nine places in the US and for some reason at the very last moment I also noticed okay I, why don't I visit the Mayo Clinic I had to find out where it actually is and uh, and so I met uh, a Belgium guy that just started to work there for uh, one or two or years and that was Paul Van Hoot uh, and he told me about all these blood vessels and this, this uh, the endothelial cells that cover it and I thought, uh, that's very interesting, and uh, because the blood vessels are everywhere, so that must be important. And there I went uh, to the Mayo Clinic and, uh, and had a very good time ever since. So what do you think is the role of a mentor for uh, young scientists in, in, in uh, nowadays? Uh, because this is obviously evolving. Well, I think it's uh, absolutely crucial. Our, you know, in, in our time, we need good role, mo role models, and uh, this has become more and more difficult with the current uh, culture. But I think uh, you need a, a role model that tells you how to become successful, that you admire, that uh, you learn from. And so I always uh, give the advice, you, you have to select uh, the right institution and the right person. And uh, again, when I went to the States, I was looking what they publish, but also whether the guy uh, in charge is at the end of the authorship or whether he is at the front. And I think a mentor also uh, should soon become, you know, the last author and allow the others uh, to develop their own career. And that eventually everybody benefits from this strategy. Uh, I, I cannot uh, agree more, and I think that with time, uh, the mentor becomes kind of a scientific friend. Is that the case? Uh, yes, I mean, you know, Paul Van Hoot is still visiting as a, uh, as a visiting scientist and pro visiting professor uh, at the Center for Molecular Cardiology, where I do the basic science. He talks now to my fellows and tells me, uh, you know, how to develop them further, and uh, that uh, turned out to be very useful. And uh, you've done a lot of contributions to cardiovascular science throughout the years. Which one you, th you yourself consider as the most important? Well, I think, you know, at the time when I started to work on endothelial research in the late 80s, uh, just a few people would do that. And, uh, and so we, whatever we did was new. Uh, we looked at uh, endothelial dysfunction in renal disease with cyclosporin, with hypertension, uh, with uh, oxidized LDL, you name it, and I think uh, uh, then we, we, we really could show the potential of this new concept. And also uh, we were able then uh, to quite quickly to look at humans uh, 
uh, patients, at healthy people, uh, with flow emitted vasodilation in the forearm, uh, uh, and so on. I think that uh, really made a difference for me. Yeah. So you are describing a sort of archetypal translational medicine. So what is this advice, your advice or secret of a successful translational uh, science career, doing both basic science and clinical research? Yeah, I think I was always a, an intellectual in science, uh, or in medicine rather. Uh, uh, I wanted to understand the mechanisms, and sometimes you can do this much better in animal models, but eventually you have to show that this is important for humans, because uh, indeed only you know 75% maximum of the genes are, are conserved from mouse to, to human, so uh, there's always a challenge to show that it works uh, there as well, so that's why we went uh, uh, really to the operation theater to obtain human blood vessels to show that this also works uh, and uh, and you have to be persistent you know I remember the first paper we did at the Mayo Clinic in human blood vessels we sent to Jack and the editor said that's not interesting <laughs> <laughs> so uh, eventually we prevailed <laughs> at some point you decided to take on another job which is uh, leading uh, uh, a European Heart Journal, and uh, you've uh, succeeded with it uh, uh, enormously. Uh, what were the major challenges for European Heart Journal when you were taking it uh, over, and uh, uh, where do you describe the source of success? Well, first of all, <clears throat> by accident, uh, Cholas Calso, when he took over circulation, he asked me to become the uh, European editor, and so I learned a lot from him uh, about uh, how to run a, a journal and also his concept to have uh, subspecialty journals, which initially I felt is a bit crazy, but then uh, I, I noticed that this is really, uh, you know, uh, something we should do. And then uh, when uh, the, uh, they, they announced uh, the hard journal editorship, I wasn't sure whether I should do it. But then a lot of my colleagues in the department felt we should uh, try to get this and then uh, we started, and uh, the first uh, editorial I wrote in uh, uh, January 2009 was entitled The European uh, Heart Journal Goes Global. And I think a major success was that I lived, as you did, in the States and in Europe, and I had a lot of friends in the States. I just could call them, and they, they helped me to develop uh, uh, the journal. Uh, I asked my friend uh, Hiroshima Kawa in Japan to join, so we had a global network of editors and I think uh, that was essential because science is a global business and if you're not global you, you lose. So do you find uh, uh, editors work as uh, mostly challenging or mostly enjoyable or uh, both? Well in general I find it enjoyable otherwise I wouldn't have done it for 10 years. I'm not a masochist. Yeah. Uh, of course uh, you have to build it in your life. I mean uh, I I cannot have, you know, vacations as you probably don't have, uh, where I just shut down it for three weeks. That's today very impossible. But I always uh, was able to fit it into my daily life, and uh, so it went pretty smoothly. And uh, and of course, uh, what's truly important is the editorial team. We have a really a fantastic editorial team, and when you are successful, they are also excited and they work even harder for you. So um, I think that that was really uh, crucial to have people that uh, help you to to run it, that are very reliable uh, and reachable all the time. So some of my uh, collaborators they answer emails uh, all the time, also on weekends, and that that was essential for success, I think. Yeah. And do you have time to do anything else? Do you have hobbies or uh, how do you uh, relax and recharge? When I uh, relax, I write something else. Uh, so uh, I wrote uh, two books on the philosophy uh, uh, of science and medicine, and um, mainly in German because uh, my English is not always perfect. Uh, and so I read a lot of books about questions of value, of uh, how science works, you know. And I also wrote some editorials with great pleasure on uh, what, what is science and how does uh, evidence evolve and how does it uh, disprove itself. So I admire Sir Karl Popper uh, and, and many of these new philosophers uh, as well as Emmanuel Kant and uh, this is what I uh, really like to read as well. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you very much, uh, Tom, for uh, uh, joining us for Leaders in Cardiovascular Medicine uh, series of Cardiovascular Research. Thank you.